that early experience uh, on all my children, uh, you know, I played another pimp on all my children. You know, I, I had become pretty <laughs> adept at that <laughs> character type after Willie Dynamite, I guess. And I got this role on all my children as this bad guy, this, this pimp guy who became really a sensation, by the way. You know, that year that, that Tyrone was on all my children, it was like, whoa, you know, everybody. I mean, everywhere I'd go, bus drivers, police officers, they, Tyrone, hey, you know, it was like, he was, he was almost as much, as much a phenomenon as, as Elmo, but in a different way, right? But, but um, when Sesame Street got wind of the fact that, you know, I was playing both roles, you know, on daytime TV, <laughs> it became clear to them that, you know, they couldn't, you know, uh, because, you know, and, and I, I didn't know at the time, but uh, there is a tremendous responsibility involved, you know, with the imagery that we, that we uh, you know, uh, allow our talents to, to be a part of because, you know, we have these young minds that are being, you know, at, at this very vulnerable, fertile stage, you know, that, that trust what they see and they believe that we are who, who, who they see. And, um, you know, when they began to get letters from parents saying, you know, how can you let Gordon do this? My kid is so confused, you know, he's, first of all, what is a kid doing? My, my, my reaction was, what's a kid doing watching all my children? You know, that's not for kids. But the fact is that there are a lot of homes where there is no supervision, where kids are, you know, able to just watch whatever they want to watch, unfortunately. Um, and besides the fact that, you know, uh, All My Children and Tyrone was not a career goal that I thought was going to lead anywhere, <laughs> you know, anywhere significant for me as an artist or as a person, you know. Uh, but it was it was it was a fun job because I, I, as any actor worth his salt will tell you, playing bad guys is the most fun. I mean, because <laughs> like Oscar, you get to say and do things that you would, could never get away with in real you, life. Yeah. You also appear on Sanford and Son. Mm -hmm. I guess yeah, so. I played kind of a bad guy in that, but that was a comedy. I was a ba I was a bank robber, and the funny thing about that was, you know, how how do you play a villain with a guy like Red Fox, who is just the most hysterical person. He doesn't even have to say anything, you know. He just has to look at you, and you're, you know, you. It's like he's daring you not to laugh, you know? and so that was that was a big challenge, <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. I had a great time with him, and um, uh, you know, just just doing that one that one uh, job with him, but. Uh, um, and Sex and the City, you've appeared on that. Yeah, that was just a brief thing I played. Um, I'd say I, I, I had done a, another really brief role uh, in a movie that uh, Sarah Jessica Parker uh, was in with Bruce Willis. Actually, it was a movie called Striking Distance. I played a, one of the homicide detectives in that. And she, was, she played a, a police officer who falls in love with Bruce Willis. And it wasn't a great movie, uh, but... Um, I thought it would be nice working with her again, and it was, because I, I, I enjoyed working with her both times. She's really uh, just a wonderful person to be around and very talented, gifted lady. And, uh, and we had fun uh, laughing about the earlier experience uh, of you know, shooting in Pittsburgh on, on the river. <laughs> you also did a Kojak with that. Mm -hmm. That was interesting. Um, I wasn't feeling well during that whole period. I, it was midwinter. It was one of the coldest Januarys ever, and I, I, I think I had a, I had a, a flu or some kind of a fever during that whole experience. But I was outdoors, shooting this scene in like ten below zero. You know, it was a whole series of scenes where uh, there was a kidnapping, and I was the the captain in charge of the homicides. Division and Kojak, of course, um, uh, began to throw his weight around and kind of take over the case because you know he was Kojak, you know. So that was kind of fun, you know. I was probably the only other um, 
bald-headed detective ever to appear on Kojak, besides Tally's of Violence. <laughs>